Hey, what's up everybody? Reckless Boone here. Today we're going to be going over variables, what they are, where you can use them, and I'm going to go over a couple of different techniques for using them in different buttons like a counter and a multi-valued switch. Um, be sure to hit like, subscribe, uh, leave any comments down below, and let's get to it. Okay, so you're probably wondering what variables are. They store values that might change depending on uh, what a plugin has to do or if you trigger an action that changes them. It's just a place to store some information that might change and reference it in certain places. You can find all of your variables. On the left side, there's this tab with the little X on it. If you go there, it'll show all of your plugin variables as well as any user created variables. Each plugin will have its own set of variables that you can view. So if I take that off, the OBS plugin has all of these variables currently on uh, my instance. Um, on top of that, you can create your own variables. And if you click there, you can see that you can create uh, four different types. There's integer, float, string, boolean. Integer is just 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Float is with a decimal point, so you can have 0 0.12, 1.34, all that kind of stuff. Strings are just, you know, text. And Boolean is a true-false value, or yes-no, on-off, 0-1, that uh, kind of value there. So if uh, you wanted to create, say, my score variable, and you can just increment it uh, every time, you can just create that. And you'll see all of your variables here. You can then also change the different type and change the value or just outright delete them. I'll show you how you can utilize those more later. Okay, so now that you know what variables are, you might be wondering how you can use them or where they might go. Um, you can use them in quite a few different places, but let's start with uh, buttons. So if you're creating a button, you can change the label here you'll see that you can use a variable just right here. And let's say I wanted to use the, I want to display the current scene. So if I change scenes, this is gonna change between uh, whatever the scene name is so that you can see what you're currently at on top of the button. Um, and then you can also add more uh, text around it. So say current scene is that. Um, and then that, that part will change and this will stay uh, as that text right there. You can also pop this out and do um, a little bit more uh, editing to it and you can kind of see what the current result is. You can add some if and ors. This gets a little harder. Um, if you want to look more into using the Coddle uh, templating, you can click here to have that pop up and read about the documentation. You're also welcome to uh, ask in the Discord. Uh, many people have and we kind of know how to do it. I don't think any of us are really Coddle experts, but um, we can we can get our way through there. There's some very knowledgeable people. Um, another place you can use them is in the uh, button bind states right here. So these will only allow you to use true, false, or the Boolean variables. Um, they only have two states, on or off, and what it's going to do is change between the off and the on state on your button. So let's say we're going to say that this is recording. Let's just say that's that's what it's going to be. We're going to have, um, I don't have any icon packs, so we'll just say recording here, or we'll say not recording, and recording. So when, uh, if I were to use the OBS recording variable here, that's a true, true or false variable, while I'm recording an OBS, it will use the on state and show recording. Um, if I am not recording, it will then switch to the off state automatically. This is um, really just an easy way to change the state depending on one variable if there is such a thing. Um, and I will show you how you can do that in a different way uh, for uh, three states. So it doesn't necessarily have to be an on, off, true, false kind of variable. Okay, so let's say that you want this button to be on if a certain scene is active. Um, current scene gives you the text of the scene, but it's not an on off, so it won't work here. So we can't use it in the bind state uh, area. But what you can do is on event, if you use the on event and create one. So when a variable changes, and we want to use the OBS uh, current scene variable. So when the current scene changes, 
we're going to do something. We're going to check to see if that same variable, OBS current scene, is equal to the scene that I want, and my scene is called recording. Uh, if we hit, uh, we want to perform an action right here. We want to set the button state to on. And then if it's not recording, we want this button state to be off. So just to read it again, this is going to occur anytime that this variable changes and we're checking for a very specific value within it. This lets you change the on off state based on variables that aren't just true or false, but you can check for a specific value. Okay, another place that you can use these variables are, are in conditions for uh, button presses. So you wanna, if you wanna check that a certain um, variable is a specific value before running an action, you can do that, or that it's not that, you can also run an action. So another place that you can use variables is in the macro deck variables actions. You can save them to a file and read from a file if you need to um, get a value from a different program that doesn't have a plugin yet. Uh, you can get a little, it's a little complex to do that, but one thing that I like to use uh, user variables for is creating a score counter or like a win loss streak. Um, so let's go ahead and show you how to sh set one of those up. So in order to create a score counter, let's go to the variables and we're going to create our own, a user variable. And we're going to call, we're going to use an integer because there's just going to be a counter. And I'm going to say win streak. And we're going to start at zero. I hit OK. And now we have a win streak variable right here. And it starts at zero. So let's go back here. We're going to create a new button. The label is going to be win streak. And underneath here, we want the value of that variable. So I'm going to use this button right here. And I will use the win streak variable. Right now it's zero. Put that in the middle and make it a little bit bigger. So when I click this button, I want that to increase by one. So in my, I'm going to create an action here. When I press the button, we're going to do macro deck variables. Then we're going to change the variable value, and here's our user variable. And we're gonna use the count up. You can do count down, you can also set it to a specific value, and we'll use this in a, in a minute to reset the value if we want to. So right now we're gonna do count up, um, since this is an integer value that will be uh, there. And so now, let's go ahead and hit okay. So let's go ahead and act like we press it. So every time you press it, now your win streak is gonna go up. Okay, so say you've now increased the win streak and you want to, when you long press it, you want to reset the value. So let's do on a long press, which is like holding it for a couple of seconds. When we long press it, let's change the variable value and we're going to set it back to zero. Now you'll notice that there's this button here. You can even use variables inside this value to set the variable. So you can get pretty uh, complicated with these. But right now, I'm just going to use the set to zero. So we reset it uh, to zero when we long press it. And when we short press it, we're going to count up. So let's just make sure, yep, we can still uh, increase it. And now when I push and hold the button, it resets it back to zero. So then you can keep going and reset. Okay, so let's say that you want to use a variable um, that is more of a multiple value switch. So let's create three different value. Well, let's create a variable first, and we're gonna be we're gonna use a user variable. We're gonna call this one. Um, we're gonna use a string, and we're gonna call it. Um, we'll call this variable heating up. Uh, we're gonna start the value off as cold, and then we'll go from cold to medium to hot. So over here, let's go ahead and create some buttons. We're gonna start one here and we're gonna call it heating up cold. And now when it's off, we want it to be like this. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. And we're gonna switch over and make it green. But when it's on, it's gonna be green. When it's off, it's gonna be black. 
So let's go ahead and create the other buttons for the other values. Okay, so now I have cold, warm, and hot. So we want the green to follow wherever we click on one. We want to set the value and we want the uh, state to follow. So let's, on the cold one, when we press it, we want to set that variable, heating up, we want to set it to cold. So we have the action to set it to cold. Let's go ahead and do that with the other ones. Over here, we want an action. We're going to set heating up to warm here. And then here, we're going to set it to hot. So now that we click this, we can see that our variable does in fact change when we click the different buttons. So we put it back to cold. It's now cold. But we want that state to follow. So the next thing we need to do is on event, when a variable changes, and when our heating up variable changes, we want to, well, first we need to check the condition that the variable heating up is, if it's equal to cold, that's this one. We wanna make sure that this action button is set to on. Otherwise, if it's not cold, we want to set this action button to off. So now we hit okay. And when we go to warm, it's off. And when we go to cold, it's on. I go back and it turns off. So let's go ahead and do that with the other ones. Again, we go to on event, variable changed. We select the variable. We wanna do a condition to check the value of the variable. So if heating up is now warm, we want this to be on. Otherwise, we want this to be off. And now we should be able to go back and forth between hot or cold and warm. And now we're gonna do it with the, the hot one. And there you have it. Now you have a three state button that will follow as you change the variable. This will also work with, um, with plugin variables, say like Discord or OBS, say you wanna have five scenes here. This is actually how I have mine set up. I have five scenes at the top and I click one and whatever the current scene is, if that button uh, has the same value, then it's going to be lit up. So I know which scene it is just by looking at my deck. Okay, so now you should be a little more familiar with variables and how you can use them. If you have any suggestions for future videos, go ahead and leave that those below down in the comments section. Once again, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. It really helps me out and it costs you nothing. Hope to see you in the next one.